1879, 20th of February, came to Holdridge, Nebraska. My dad run the first meat market that ever was in Holdridge. Ten years old, I come out to Colorado in 1886. We lived in the dugout in 04. My dad's name is John Adler. My mother's name is Mary Adler. Brother Gus, Ad Gus Adler and Fritz Adler and Molly Adler and Ida Adler. There was six of his children. Well, nine in all, but there was only six left. And then uh, when we moved to Sterling, where my dad ran a butcher shop, when the town was quite wild, nothing but cowboy town. And then from there we moved out on the old homestead. And we stayed there for a while, and the crops got bad. We didn't raise any why we left there, moved back to Sterling. And as we was going with a wagon traveling along the bridge, we big bunch of Indians sitting along the river, but they weren't wild, they were tame, I guess they looked like they was tame. <laughs> to me, they looked like they were wild. Well, we got into Sterling, and when I was a young girl about 15, I cooked for the, for Paul, when I see no one, I don't call Blair's either. I cooked for a ranch. I cooked for the Pawnee Ranch, and I LF Ranch, they called it, and I cooked for Paul and Blair Ranch, at Crook, and I cooked for McPhee and Mullen Ranch at Crook. McPhee that lives up here, and Mullen that give a home. They were both there, and I met them both at, at the ranch. And then I worked at two or three section houses and restaurants. And then I took, when I was 15, I'm getting backwards, I was 15, near, and we took a job. My father was up in Black Hawk. And we never heard from him for a while, so he left us in the restaurant, which we couldn't make it. So I took a job of herding cattle for John Reardon. We've heard 265 head of cattle. My brother was very small, about between 12 and 13, he helped me. And we also branded calves, and we sure had fun doing that, because we'd get our hands burnt more than once with the ropes. And we practiced roping and breaking horses and, and riding broncos. If we wanted anything from sterling food, we'd we ride down to Sterling, which was 12 miles. We'd ride a horseback and bring our gooses on the horseback, which stuff was cheap at that time. You could buy three pounds of uh, round steak for a quarter and three uh, links of bologna for a quarter. And if you wanted a soup bone, it wasn't like they sell the day the bone, but my dad would leave enough meat on it to make a fellow a good meal. Oh, let's see, I guess the bone, I know. No, we didn't have no trouble on the wagon train when we traveled out in a covered wagon from Holdridge. And we went to Julesburg, which was a very, a very wild cowboy town also. And we camped outside. And we got over here and we took, my dad had a homestead and we only lived in a dugout and we had to carry our water from the spring three miles. And we'd go bright and early in the morning because we were afraid of cattle, the range cattle, and hardly ever see anybody. It was 50 miles to Julesburg and 50 miles to Yuma. So when we got, we uh, never had no horses, so we'd go with the neighbors, and it'd take them a day to drive, and then they, they'd stay over a day and come back, and sometimes they'd be longer. And we'd only get big fat side meat and beans, which we mostly li <laughs> lived on. And we never see anybody who wants to all a cowboy come across. One cowboy's name was Charlie Oberg. And another one was Antelope Bill used to walk across. He said he killed the most antelope around in the state, and so that's how he got the name of Antelope Bill. Oh, the time of Indian fight? And when there's Indian fight, of the sitting bulls, I think, up in Nebraska somewhere, mother was scared, she'd shut the door and lock the door at night and stop the clock for fear they'd hear where we were, and she was scared to death, and I was glad to get out of that darn old, old dugout. And then there's a gray wolf who used to come along with that spring where we get water, and when he got even to the house, he'd sit there and look at us, and we were really scared of him. We had a little bit of a dog, and we'd never let him go out for fear the gray wolf would kill him. And uh, John, old timer, John, John Warren, he used to kill the antelopes, and he'd have a whole wagon load, and he'd come along mothers, and mother'd buy one and give him five dollars for it. He'd skin it and hang it in the back of the house. So one night there was an awful racket, and I was wheeze wondering what it was. We was afraid to go out, and when we got up, the, the wolves or coyotes had pulled the animal down, he'd all up, so we was out of meat again. So then another night, we was out of everything mostly, and tap on the door, and mother's afraid to open it, and the same old fellow, John Warren, he had a 
Coney Rabbit skin he gave it to us so we had meat for a while. Well, lots of times we was very short in food because it was so far to town. And then they built a little place called Chinola, Colorado. And they'd haul a little food like what we needed from Yuma, like sugar, coffee, and flour. And that was the post office. And when my sister was born, this dug out in 1888, uh, Mrs. Ross, Lady Idy Ross. Why, um, they marked her birth down to Chinoa, Colorado. It was named Chinoa, Colorado after Chinoa, Illinois. These folks are Chinoa, Illinois. Then we went to school. We had to walk about three miles, a little old soddy. And this here, Mrs. Uh, oh, she, the woman that lived there in Chinoa, she uh, taught school there. Oh, yeah. And I now went, after we went to Stern and lived there, I met Charlie. I was going with another guy, but then I met Charlie, and we were married in 1900. And then all the kids are born on from 19 to down, and so on and so forth. I had six children, three girls. I had eight children, two boys dead, two boys living, and four daughters living. They all live here in Inglewood, the six that are left. And my brother Fitz was a bronco rider. He won a saddle up in Wyoming at one time. He was a regular cattleman, and he, uh, that's all he done was ride was cattle. My other brother was a miner, and he lived in Boulder, Colorado. And one sister, she died in Ohio. The other sister, mine, died in um, in Florence, Colorado. I'm the only one living out of nine children. Now I'm the only one living in my family, and that's all, just me. Now I'm 84 years old. Well, when we was on that, uh, uh, is it ready? Yeah. When we lived in this 